this video we're going to talk about assemblies in Core Store. And we'll start by talking about item kits and what the difference is between an item kit and an assembly. So item kits are basically bundles of two or more different products. And I guess you could actually bundle the same product with a uh, multiple quantity, but that would just be a price special. So an item kit typically is composed of two or more products at various different quantities. And the idea is that you give this item kit a price. So for example, we've got a few item kits here that are set up and I'll just pull one up. And when you define an item kit, basically you give it a name and you give it a price and a category and then you specify what items are in that kit. Right. So when you add an item kit and you sell it, the system will actually break that kit apart. So if we had a kit that had two items in it, each one maybe has a selling price of $50, but I want to create that kit and give a price of $80. When I ring that kit up, it will actually ring the kit up at $80, but it will break down the items. So it will actually ring up the items as two different items. And let, let's just go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and uh, uh, we'll first look at the items. And we'll just set up widget one, just say it's an accessory, and let's say the price normally for widget one is $50. And then we'll set up widget two. And let's say that's an accessory as well. And the price will be $50. Okay, so when I go to the item kits and I want to create a kit, we'll just call it the widget one and two. And again, it's still an accessory. And in this case, you know, maybe I want to price it at $80. But first, let's choose the items in the kit. So we'll add item, which is widget one. And we'll add item widget two. Again, showing zero, that's the cost. We didn't put a cost on this particular item. And then we'll, actually, maybe I put it as a cost and not as a selling price. We'll, we'll go back and fix that real quick. And let's say the we can put a cost for this and the selling price will be 80 and let's say the cost is 60. All right, let's go back to our widgets. And let's edit it. So yeah, I, I put the uh, price in the cost field. So let's go ahead and say it's $30 cost and $50 selling price. Obviously, I don't have a markup. Just put that markup automatically. Go ahead and hit save. Turn to items. And we'll do the same thing for widget 2. I could have just used my uh, next button. And we'll go to pricing. Again, we'll change that to 30 and that to 50. So selling price is now in there. And we'll return to items and go to item kits. And we'll go to our widget one and two kit, which is the first kit over here. And you'll see that I've got under the pricing, I've got the cost at 60, the price at 50. If I go to items, um, it will show the widget one at 50 and uh, widget two at 50, right? So now, now let's go ahead and sell this particular item. So I'll go into sales and let me cancel this particular sale that I'm in. And I'll just ring up my widget one and two. All right, so you'll notice immediately it calculates the discount, right? And it 
actually is selling it is selling each item at forty dollars. Now again, that's because both widget one and widget two were priced at the same price. So that's a kit. Basically, a kit gets broken down, and at the end of the day, the customer gets a discount on the kit, but the the items in the kit remain individual items with separate quantities, separate costs, right? And that's where an assembly is different. So an assembly, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll build an assembly using the same items. And what I want to do is let me just receive uh, these widgets into inventory. So I'll just go into receiving and receive widget one and also receive widget two. And I'll receive, let's say, a hundred of these, and I'll receive a hundred of those. Actually, we'll receive two hundred of these. No, let me make it one fifty. Okay. So uh, we can just choose a miscellaneous supplier if I want, and I'm paying them cash, and I'll just receive those two items. All right, so an assembly is basically a finished product, right? So I'm going to build a product out of components. And that product is a product that now is a finished good. It's typically assemblies, the terminology is used in a manufacturing process. So when I want to build an assembly, I can go into the assembly screen and I can click on new assembly. And the first question it's going to ask me is um, what is this assembly and I had already started started one and I created this finished product one right so finished product one if I go into the item screen I'll just show you I just set it up as a basically an accessory it's just a finished product and I can go to edit that product and I can see what cost I put in and the price that I put in. I left the cost at zero and the price, selling price at seven fifty. Right, so I'm just calling this my finished product. Right, so I'll go back to my assemblies. And again, the first thing when you build a new assembly, I'd already started building one, is you have to choose your item that you're built that you're building. And again, this is basically the, the new assembly. We're not building the product. I know I use that terminology, but we need to be careful with terminology. We're defining the product. We're creating a recipe. So if this was a cake, I would specify here's the amount of flour, the amount of sugar, the number of eggs that I'm using for this cake. It's no different, right? If you have a physical assembly, in this case, this finished product, I need to define what is in this product. What? How do I make this product? So I'm going to say I need one widget one and I actually need two widget twos, right? So in order to build this product I need one of widget one and two of widget two and I'll hit save. Right, so now I have a, a product in here and it shows me my cost and my selling price, right, for each individual component. And it shows me for each single finished product that I build, I need essentially three items. I need two widget twos and one widget one. All right, now when I go back to assemblies, you'll see I have a few defined. In this case, I'll just choose the latest one. I can click on it. One of the nice features that we added is the ability to clone, right? And that will duplicate, you know, that that recipe, right? If you're thinking about uh, you're you're selling cakes and you have two cakes that are similar, you don't have to redefine the the recipe for that cake. You can just clone it, right? That's what that clone button does. But in this case, I'm going to build, right? And I want to actually build my finished product because if you think about it right now, I can't sell my finished product because I don't have any in stock. I, I have the components. So the idea behind assemblies is that we are going to build these assemblies whenever we want to have stock. You know, if I run out of stock or I run low, that means I need to build additional assemblies.
right? So in this case, I'm going to build 200 of them, right? And I can choose what location I'm building them to, and I can also specify any notes. And I'll hit save. You'll notice that I get an error, that I don't have enough components to build a requested quantity. Why is that? So think about it. I just chose to build 200 of these finished products. I have two, I have, I don't have enough quantity, right? Because I only have 100 of widget one and 150 of widget two. So even if I put 150, I'll get the same error, right? Because I only have 100 of widget one, right? So even if I put 100, I don't have enough because I only have 150 of widget 2, and I need two widget 2s for every single finished product. So in this case, I'm only going to build 50. All right, so it's really quick. I've now built that finished good. So now if I go into my item screen, we have a couple of interesting things. So immediately you'll see that I've got 50 in stock. Again, I, sh I really should have put a cost here, right? Because the cost you want to enter is not just the individual components, but there's a labor cost, right? And maybe it takes a really long time to build each one of these. So my cost is pretty high. I'm going to say my cost is $520 total. So you'll notice, oh, I just messed up my, my price for some reason. Okay, so you'll notice if I save this and I continue editing and I go to uh, my finished product and I hit done on edit pricing. So let's edit this particular product. You'll notice that the inventory transaction is here and it shows that I built 50. Right, and it shows me the build, and I can actually click on this build if I want to edit any information on it. But I can also go back to the assemblies and look at the history of all of the builds for this product, and I can look at build history. Right, so it shows me that on the 28th, I actually built 50 of these. I can also go to the individual items. So if I go to and pull up my widgets, Right. You'll notice that I've got a hundred that were built, uh, or I have a hundred of widget one, quantity one. Let me edit and go to the inventory. And you'll see here that I had actually took 50 out. I received 150, so I have 100 remaining of widget 1. And then if I go to my next item, which there's a there's a next item here. Let's see if I can hit that link. So if I go to look at widget 2, I had received 100, but I built 50, and it required two of each. So I now have zero in stock, right? So that's why I've got 100 remaining of one item. I'm sorry. Yeah, 100 remaining of one item and zero remaining of the second item. So now when I go to the sales screen, I can actually sell this finished product, right? And it doesn't break it down because it's a complete product. So if I look for finished product and I sell it, it's selling for $750. Again, it's, it's as if you're selling an item that you purchased from a supplier, but in this case, you built the item. So that's the difference between assemblies and item kits. So assemblies are really powerful if you're taking raw materials and creating a finished good, or if you're taking you know, different finished goods and creating a whole new product. And that product, again, can have its own image, its 
price, uh, everything else, because it, it's set up as a regular item in your items screen. Thanks for watching this video.